1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Today is Tuesday, September 29, 1953. I was born in Lyons, New York, and I've lived most of my life in Lyons. I came to Ithaca College September of 1953 and expect to stay here four years. My name is Joan Santelli. A young fox named Reynard, Renard get, saw his shadow at sunrise on Wednesday and said, I'll have either a deer or a camel for lunch today, and I think I'd better start out right now to look for them if I want to find one or the other by lunchtime. I'll probably have to walk many miles for them because I'm sure there's nothing around here. After a while, he passed four or five older foxes who were running along a narrow path in the forest. They'd seen their shadows early that morning and were also searching for some large animals to eat for lunch. At noon, our young fox went back to join them where they'd stopped to rest near the edge of a small body of water. They were tired and hungry, too, but when they all looked at their shadows again, they say, said, a mouse will do. Uh, this, ref this summary of the story is uh, it's about a fox that, again, a bunch of foxes at the beginning of the day that were very hungry, but after they'd walked a while and got tired, they decided that anything would do. There was no man who, was, who said, How shall I flee from this terrible cow? I will sit on this stile and continue to smile, which may soften the heart of the cow. There was an old person of Burton whose answers were rather uncertain. When they said, How do you do? He replied, How are you? That distressing old person of Burton. That's all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. My name is Joan Santelli. Today is December 8, 1953. This is my second recording. Golf is one of the few games for both old and young, for champions in this difficult and fascinating sport have been as young as 18 and as old as 70. More than any other game, perhaps, golf calls for a spirit of courtesy and fairness. A player stands quietly aside while his opponent makes his stroke. He assists in every way to give this opponent an equal chance with himself, and should a player lose his ball, the other searches for it as diligently as if it were his own. Golf also puts a player on his honor, for he alone keeps, a tr keeps track of his own score. These facts, combined with the skill required to excel in the excellent physical exercise obtained usually in the midst of attractive scenery, fully entitle golf to be known as the royal game. My name is Joan Santelli. Today is Friday, January 29th, 1954. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. My favorite charity is muscular dystrophy. Today there are not enough doctors or money to look into this wasting disease of the muscles. There are three main types of muscular dystrophy. The first begins early in childhood from the ages of 3 to 10. Once a child gets this, it progresses rapidly, involving more and more muscles. The affected muscles, especially calves, grow larger from deposits of fat. Actually, the legs grow weak. The muscles degenerate, and the child may not be able to get, keep his balance or raise himself in the chair. A second time, type begins in childhood or, or adolescence, often starting in the shoulder muscles. This grows more slowly, so patients live to middle age. This is the first type I mentioned is hereditary. The third type starts in early adulthood, and the lip muscles are affected. Muscular dystrophy associations <coughs> have formed in major cities of the United States. Doctors are still trying to, trying to discover the cure or investigating foods that may help. Specialists in this muscular dystrophy field recommend vitamin E and have patients doing like exercises to help build up muscles in their legs to replace the stria striated muscles that are mostly involved. At least 100,000 Americans have muscular dystrophy. I hope that soon doctors can combat this terrible handicap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is my first recording for the second semester of the Fundamentals of Speech course. My name is Joan Santelli. The date today is April 8, 1954. A cunning-looking fellow was once accused before the magistrates of, steal of stealing a pair of trousers. After a long and patient investigation, the man was discharged because the evidence against him was not sufficiently strong. He continued, however, to remain in the dock after the acquittal had been formally pronounced. The lawyer who had defended him, observing that he did not move, informed him that he was at liberty to go about his business if he had any.
The man shook his head slightly, but remained. By this time, the court was nearly empty. Again, his lawyer told him that he could go and asked why he seemed so stupid. Just come here a moment, please, sir, said the man, and let me whisper in your ear. I can't go until all the witnesses against me have left the court. And why may that be? Because of the stolen trousers, sir, don't you understand? Most certainly I don't. What about the trousers, said the lawyer? Only this, sir, whispered the fellow in his lowest tone. I've got them on. <clears throat> Many years ago, Buffalo roamed the miles and miles of open plains where today fine cars have beaten a path from town to town. In those days, it was not against the law to shoot those these shaggy brown animals, and many fine marksmen saw an opportunity to, to melt the plains as a source of riches. Since that time, the fear has come up that there would soon be no more of these animals, so, have, so they have long been protected and are considered a symbol of the old West. I have a cold. That's all. Well, My name is Joan Santelli. This is my final recording for the second semester of the Fundamentals of Speech class. It was our last week in high school and we had decided to visit the smelting works for our last session of school. When we arrived on the grounds, we found a guard w waiting who let, who let us down a narrow path to the furnaces. The blasts of heat were almost too much for us and the red sparks went flying in all directions as the molten metal was poured from the huge bath and into the forms where it was molded or into another machine where it was rolled into bright, shiny sheets. We started leisurely through another building, but weren't permitted to enter various departmental sections because there was most, there was most secret government work going on there. Not wanting to skirmish with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, we went on to the ballpark where we ate Frankfurter sandwiches and saw an exhibition game between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Yankees. We saw Homer clouded over the wall by Mickey Mantle, and that made the day complete. After that we headed for home because we had many miles to cover. As we rolled along in our bus, we sang almost all of the songs that we knew, and when we got back to Aristotle High School, we were a tired but happy group of seniors. That's all. That was fast. That was fast. That was fast. That was fast. That was fast.